Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Nice, cool rain outside, and we can sit inside and enjoy the best of both worlds. It's good to see all of you, and especially our visitors. If you are a visitor with us this morning, we're delighted that you're here. We want you to feel that you are a part of our family because you surely are the moment that you come into our presence because we love to have friends come and worship with us. If you should be a visitor and from another denomination, let me remind you that the Lord's table is open to everyone who desires to come. And so we want you to come and feel at home at our communion table as well as in our pew. One of the more popular television programs today is Unsolved Mysteries. A few weeks ago, I heard an announcement of that program having to do with a special program that would be given, having to do with unclaimed riches. On this particular program, there would be an exploration of the many rich men and women who died, leaving great wealth and no heirs. These persons were to be portrayed, and possibly someone seated out there watching television would be an heir and overnight become a millionaire. That's an exciting possibility. Last week, I heard Ed McMahon promise me $10 million. He was so convincing. All I had to do was to wait for that letter to come to me from a publishing house, return the sweepstakes form, and in just a few weeks I would receive a check for $10 million. Now, I was a little incredulous in the beginning, but then I got the letter. And that letter practically promised me that $10 million without question. Now, for some of us, that's an exciting possibility. To inherit millions we didn't know was ours. Or to win a sweepstake and suddenly be a millionaire. These are fantasies that slip through each of our minds from time to time. Though we doubt whether it will really happen to us, we're prompted to think, what if it did? I could have everything in life that I really want. Well, what if someone made this announcement to you? You could be the recipient of the fulfillment of every dream that that money promises to fulfill, but really want. Suppose you were given the promise that out of a world that is filled with anxiety, you would be given total peace. That surrounded by people who are living in disharmony, you would have complete joy. You would have contentment. Suppose all of the things that really make life worthwhile were to be promised you, and in addition to all this, it would last forever. It wouldn't be that which would cease when life ceases, but this would be your gift for all eternity. If Ed McMahon had made that promise on television and told everyone where to go in order to receive it without question, can you imagine the crowds that would fill the highways, that would push along trying to get to that sweepstake? And yet, on Pentecost Sunday, the churches aren't full. There are some of us here who take that promise seriously. And the world is filled with the millions who couldn't care less who do not see this as a promise that has any 
relevance to their lives. And the greatest promise made in all of history goes unclaimed by millions of people. This is Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the fulfillment of the promise that Christ made. From the time that Abraham moved out of his home country into a wilderness about which he knew nothing, down through the words of all the prophets, through the time of travail and suffering of our Lord, and in the promises that the angels sang about at his coming into the world, and the credibility of all those promises established by his resurrection, all of those have been channeled down to one moment. And that is the moment when God empowered his Holy Spirit to give to each one of us the gifts of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. You don't get either except through the Holy Spirit. Nowhere is the promise made that any of these are to be ours except as given by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit within us that quickens our hunger for it. And when one asks why is Christianity better than any other religion, the answer is quick, pure, simple. Only Christianity has the Holy Spirit which links us with God and allows everything that God has promised to be channeled into our lives. Without the Holy Spirit, it can't get in. And we live on the empty fulfillment rather than having experienced it as Christ promised. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God's gift of himself. And when the Holy Spirit is active in our lives, we know power that we didn't know before. We have insight that never came to us before. Our minds are quickened. Our hearts are opened. And we perceive ourselves as having matured in all of those fragile areas that it is so difficult to build and developed within ourselves. All that needs for God's kingdom to be firmly established on earth is for each one of us to accept the gift of Pentecost. It's yours for the taking. If you haven't claimed it, Do it now. O day of peace that dimly shines Through our hopes and prayers and dreams Guide us to just as truth and love Delivered from our selfish schemes May swords of hate fall from our hands, our hearts from envy find release, till by God's grace our warring world shall see Christ's promised reign of peace. Then shall the wolf dwell Shall the fierce devour the small as peace and calm.